President John Agego Bufo, distinguished Ambassador Stephen Shaka Shaka, distinguished Vice Chancellor, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, dear colleagues and participants, you say all protocols of there. This is something I have learned from you. you know, so I guess I'm it to you. On behalf of the continent's 53 ministries of education and training and the 18 cooperation agencies that are members of ADEA Civil Committee, I welcome you to this ceremony and thank you for participating in such great numbers. I would like to give special thanks to President Kufo, who, despite his very busy schedule and his family obligations, insisted on coming to Grahamstown to participate in certain sessions of Highway Africa and in this ceremony. This shows the importance he attributes to information in general and to the development of journalism in particular. It is due to him that Ghana is ranked first in Africa today as regards freedom of the press. Since as soon as he arrived in office, the first law he repealed was the criminal libel. And he also gave a state building uh, for press house. I think this is something very important. <laughs> Usually we say that when somebody does something better than you, don't try to repeat the same thing. I think that Lowry really expressed our gratitude of all of us to Ambassador Ivan Shaka Shaka. The only thing I will add is thank you really very much for your commitment and for your partnership with Adia. I retain something from your speech is that music can be a very powerful instrument to promote quality education in Africa. Mm. The same way we use sports also to promote quality education. I would also like to thank Broad University for its unvaluable collaboration and its support to the working group comment, which are reflected in the inclusion of this round ceremony in the program of Highway Africa and the World Journalism Education Congress. I must not forget all the resource persons and the team that developed the toolkit, nor all those who contributed to the preparations for the Journalism Award, all of you journalists and communication specialists present at this gathering. Lastly, I would like to express my gratitude to my colleagues, Tanwa Debian, Adia's Communication and Federal Relations Officer, and now Nicole, Coordinator of the Working Group COVID, for their personal commitment and for the quality of the work they have put in for many years to promote the development of education journalism. To highlight the importance of the media in general and their importance for the development of Africa in particular, I would like to draw your attention to a number of facts illustrating the role of journalists. Journalists pay a very high price for their professional commitment. Every time I read about the number of journalists murdered each year, I ask myself whether, apart from soldiers, and in some cases, police officers, there are any other occupations in which so many people die on the job. In recent years, a part of the Western press has portrayed Africa as a doomed continent, knowing nothing but death, disease, disaster, and despair in the words of one of the speakers the day before yesterday. As for pessimism, were the daily grave. And yet, after each of my missions to Africa, I returned to Europe full of hope after seeing a 
initiatives offering potential for development, which the media say little about. More recently, with the holding of the World Cup in South Africa, the press expressed doubts right up to the last minute about the country's ability to organize these high events, despite the fact that it has successfully organized the World Rugby Championship won by the Springboks, incidentally, and that the officials of the FIFA reported that the preparations were progressing on schedule. On the other hand, in the last few weeks, we have seen articles in the press on the potential that resides in Africa for its own development and for that of the rest of the world. These stories have emphasized the extent of Africa's resources, not only natural but human as well. The continent's high population growth is no longer perceived as a barrier to development, but rather as an asset. As we could now forget the conflicts ravaging some African countries, the diseases, the increasing poverty, inequality, and the growing divide between rich and poor, etc. For me personally, the most reassuring thing is to see how the quality and power of the South African media's images before and during the World Cup have helped to revive the feeling of belonging of a rainbow nation not only in South Africa but throughout the continent and the African diaspora worldwide. In giving these examples, it is absolutely not my intention to hold the media responsible for what happens to us, good or bad. It is not up to the media to take responsibility for world development. All of us, in our own fields, must assume our share of responsibility. I would like to emphasize in particular the need to recognize the important role that the media and journalists play or could play in the development of our countries, considering the many challenges they face. The challenges of belonging to a country, a nation, a continent, the challenge of the development of a collective consciousness of confidence in ourselves, of citizenship, democracy, respect for cultural diversity, and so on. The societies of African countries today are multiracial, multiethnic, multicultural, multilinguistic, multidenominational. How can we ensure that we perceive and experience this diversity as an asset and a form of wealth rather than a problem, rather than as a problem? How can we ensure that we do not always perceive it as difference which leads to exclusion and refusal to recognize others, but rather see common values and local particularities which are a source of enrichment and mutual respect. Another important challenge is the issue of citizenship and critical thinking of the citizens. This is a prerequisite for true participatory democratic processes, good governance, accountability of our political leaders, and finally, sustainable development. To promote democracy in a country, citizens of that country should be able to build their own ambition, opinion on political, social, of cultural and economic issues. By the way, how many of us intellectuals could say that they vote for a candidate because we are convinced with his program? Could you raise your hand? In my mother tongue, which is Mina, spoken in Togo of Benin and understood in Ghana, we have a proverb saying, a 
Ola Mian Radio Journal, which means you, I don't know if I translate very well, you take side for a fact, not for a person. This requires for citizens a capacity of analysis in order to build their own opinion uh, on main development issues. These, among other reasons, explain and justify the key role of media and journalists in the development of education and just in development. Media and journalists, through the quality and the relevance of information and knowledge that they provide, contribute to shaping mindset, opinions, ideas of citizens. They are educators in a broad sense. But in order to play this role, they need proper training. That is the main reason why ADERA has been organizing training sessions for journalists and communication officers of the Ministry of Education and also the Africa Education Journalism Award. The toolkit that has been finalized by COMET and its partners will contribute to extend quality training to more journalists and also establish some partnerships with many training institutions all over Africa and also in other regions of the world. Thank you for your attention.